Well hello again. Now following a recent outing when I went to the wilds of Wales and shot Provia 100 against Velvia 100, uh, people did mention it would be interesting if I could also do a comparison of Provia against the more popular Velvia 50, so that's what I intend to do tomorrow morning. I'm going to head off down to my local forest, Delamere in Cheshire, and I've just got a couple of hours so I need to work quite quickly, so I'm taking my Bronica medium format camera, and I'm taking couple of rolls of the Velvia and the Provia as before. Now I will be honest up front that the Velvia is the original Velvia. This predates the cancellation of the film in about 2005, but it has been deep frozen so it should be identical in terms of characteristics. Shot many rolls of this before and it's absolutely fine. It's, uh, keeping properties are excellent. So yes, uh, let's get ready. I'll uh, pack my bag up now and head off down to the forest early tomorrow morning. down in my local forest and I'm going to be setting up for the first shot here. Simple straightforward scene you can see behind me. I've got a nice clearing, a little bit of autumnal colour. Probably going to have to go for quite a wide lens here to encompass all the elements I want and it's a good test this I think because we have a bit of sky in there, some highlight and quite deep shadow so first shot, let's get this in the bag and uh, see what else we can find. Now I'm going to bracket these exposures, one under, one over, and then obviously the correct exposure. Now this particular scene has five to six stops of exposure, and I'm struggling to hold both highlights and shadows. It's going to be quite close, so it would be interesting to see which of the films actually handles the highlights and shadows better. I don't expect either to be able to pull all the shadows up or hold all the highlights, but between them we should be able to get a decent shot. Now, as I said last night, I'm cheating slightly here. Well, not so much cheating as I'm using uh, an older version of Velvia. I'm using the original Velvia uh, because, as I said, I've been given a brick of this by my friend Robin and I'm using it up. But I don't think the characteristics have changed significantly. And the fact that it's an older film, it has been deep frozen, so it should uh, maintain its characteristics. Nonetheless, I, I probably will have to buy a new block of uh, Velvia 50 pretty soon. Uh, I'd also like to get it in 4x5 because I have Velvia 100 and I'm not totally struck on that. If you've seen my earlier video, you'll, you'll know why. But uh, yeah, these conditions are ideal for the slide films because it's very dull. And if I shot colour print or negative film, in these conditions it would be quite lacklustre. Uh, the negative films are beautiful when there's a little bit of light around because they are so soft, so pastel. But in these these dull murky condition, they just don't suit it. Now I was walking along thinking I'm going to get a big shot, something with trees, maybe distant skies in, and I was stopped in my tracks by this beautiful little scene in front of me. Let me just show you it. Now this is very straightforward. It's uh, it's obviously just a little bit of autumnal colour coming in, but I was absolutely stopped in my tracks by it because I thought it made a perfect image for the comparison because here we have two films that are known for their, their colour and vibrance and in this particular shot I only have about three stops of dynamic range so both can cope adequately, but just as before I've made one shot under and one shot over. Now for the Velvia, because it has some reciprocity failure beyond about four seconds I've allowed a little bit extra, so that should give a, a comparative sort of uh, sample for me to review on the light box, but we'll see when we get back anyway. Well, this is the uh, typical shot I was thinking of today. It's a long shot with one of my favourite views actually in the forest. I have some trees which have got some subtle colour coming through but I've got this wonderful foreground here of ferns which is a, 
a riot of colour. They, they seem to have turned unilaterally. Everything else in the forest is still quite green. I've set up with my 80mm lens because I want some of that foreground in, I want some of that colour. And I've got a little bit of the, the, the pond, the sort of brackish water in there. Now the nice thing about this again is there's only three stops of dynamic range, so very easy for slide film. And again, just as I said before, with a negative film, it would be a bit lacklustre. Maybe Ektar would do something nice with these ferns, but I want real separation and I want a bit of, a bit of drama in the background. And for that, slide films are ideal. Now just to briefly mention my exposure for this shot, I've metered off the foreground ferns because they're actually the brightest part of the scene because I'm keeping the sky out of the shot altogether. It's a bit grey and murky and what's that going to add to my shot? It's just going to pull your eye out the top of the frame. No advantage whatsoever. So I've taken my Seconic and I've made a spot meter reading of the ferns followed by the, the distant trees in the background and the darker areas which are down into the sort of water but I'm not going to try and expose that too much. It should be black. The darkest sort of shadow areas are underneath the trees and at the base of the distant tall trees over there. So I have a reading with Provia of about one second. So I was shooting at half a second, one second and two seconds. And for the Velvia, I'll be shooting at one second, two seconds and four seconds. And that just avoids the reciprocity failure you typically get with Velvia. So all in all, yeah, I'm quite enjoying this. Okay, that's the shooting done now. I've got the four images I was after. Time to get them back. I'll uh, develop them. I've got some E6 chemicals warming up uh, as we speak. And I'll get them on the light box as per the previous video and uh, let's see how they turn out. Okay, so that's the films developed and sleeved up. And I'm going to have a look at them as before on the light box to do a side by side comparison. Okay, so here's the first two images I took in the forest. Let's just to concentrate on the the most tricky one first of all. Now, as you can clearly see from this, I don't know how well it comes across in the video, but they're all very dark. And the reason for this is I had to maintain detail in the sky. Velvia, 50 on the left, and Provia, 100 on the right. Now, I can see straight away there is more shadow detail in the Provia shot than the Velvia shot. None of them, I would say, are particularly usable because they're just far too dark in the shadow areas. The sky looks OK in the centre shot, which is the normal exposure, but it really needs the plus one to bring out enough shadow detail. I could possibly make an image out of the Provia shot, definitely not the Velvia. OK, so let's move on to the, the next scene, which was of the just the, the sort of undergrowth, the brambles and the vegetation, which is slightly turning in colour again. Velvia, Provia as before. Uh, I can see the minus one shot, the, the Velvia is probably unusable, but the Provia looks quite good. Um, for the normal exposure, I like the Velvia. It's a little bit darker, but it's got some lovely rich tones in there. Provia's excellent there. And for the plus one shot, the Velvia actually looks probably at its best probably a little bit bright on some of the leaves. And the Provia is a little bit bright for my liking, but probably again would make a usable image. Next up we have the, oop, wrong one, sorry. We have the long shot of the trees and the ferns, a Velvia, Provia as before. Uh, definitely too dark, the minus one shot for the, for the Velvia. Looks pretty good in the normal exposure and looks very good in the plus one. Again with the Provia though, the Provia here looks okay, looks pretty usable at minus one. Great at the standard exposure and still very good at plus one. I would, I would give the edge though at the plus one to, to Velvia, looks lovely there. Okay, so here's the, the last image and I'll be honest, I was just using up film at this stage. I had to get home, so uh, artistically um, a one out of 10. 
again very dark the velvia at the minus one it's not too bad it looks quite nice and rich at the normal exposure and pretty good at the plus one and the provia a little bit dark at minus one very nice at the normal exposure and again holding very well at plus one so the overall impression I'm getting from looking at them on the light box, and we'll look at them in Lightroom next, is that the, the Velvia probably does need a little bit more exposure than, than rating it at 50. I mean, I know an awful lot of people rate it at 40 or even 32, and I would tend to agree with that from what I'm seeing here. It's a, it's a very nice film when exposed correctly, but the Provia is it's just proving to be superb for scanning. It really is good, and the colours look good too. So let's, let's not waste any more time. Let's crack on. I'll get these scanned, and I'll get back to you when I've got them up in Lightroom. Okay, so I've now got us into Lightroom, having scanned the images on my Epson V700. Important to mention here that none of these have been sharpened in any way or manipulated other than just avoiding the clipping of the highlights and shadows where possible, so they are raw scans. So let's jump in straight away and have a look at the, the first two, which are the plus one exposures of the Velvia and the Provia in the clearing scene. Now you can see the Velvia here on the left. It's very murky, very dark and horrible colours. Provia's not too bad though. There's a little bit of information in there. You can actually see that you could drag something out of it, but the skies are far too bright. They've blown out completely there. So uh, the skies were actually okay in the standard exposure. You can actually see far more detail in the sky here. The Velvia's losing it a bit, but the shadow detail's horrible in both. So. I think that's just a case of having far too much dynamic range to actually make a usable image from. Let's have a look at uh, one of the other ones. Let's have a look at the normal exposure of Velvia and Provia on these two here. Make sure I get the right two. Yes, these are the standard exposures. And you can see here that they're actually very, very similar. I've actually, sorry, I've got the wrong way around. Let me just flip those around for you and put the Velvia on the other side, there we go. Okay, Velvia there and the Provia there. Very similar, I think the Velvia's got the nicer colours, a little bit deeper blacks, as pretty expected. But the Provia has got quite vivid oranges and reds in there, which is very nice. I mean, I wouldn't mind either of those two, to be honest. Uh, we don't want to go through every single one of these, but let's just look at the standard exposure of the Velvia and the Provia in the open forest scene and um, again pretty close so there's nicer colors going on with the velvia here in in the in the ferns this is a bit nicer separation the colors are there you could probably boost them up in provia um, better though in the background i would say with the the provia the velvia is a little bit of a reddish tint a bit too much red for my liking but you know close one too close to call i'd say and let's pick up on the underexposed version there of the same shot and here I can clearly see that the Velvia would struggle to make an image it's just got horrible murky blacks they're just far too deep in there whereas the the Provia is, is pretty nice I would be quite happy to make an image out of that I could work on that in Lightroom so one final one let's look at the the plus one exposure on the final uninspiring scene I took on the day um, both very nice, very very close again, slightly better uh, reddish tones onto the uh, onto the Velvia. Plenty of shadow detail on both at plus one and the highlights, because obviously there's not much in the way of highlights, uh, are both well contained. I mean the uh, again the, the minus one shot with the Velvia is far too muddy and murky, whereas the Provias remain quite neutral. I quite like the, the tonality in the minus one shot. So yeah, overall I'm gonna give the nod towards Provia for my type of shooting. Uh, it's not to everyone's taste, but uh, it seems to meet the requirements I have for the type of images I shoot. Okay, well, there you go. That's the end of my rough and ready comparison of the Velvia 50 and Provia 100. I hope you found it useful. I don't like to do test charts and scientific uh, sort of t analysis. I just like to go out in the field and shoot the sort of things I like to photograph and use films and compare them that way. Also, sorry if you can hear any uh, rain noise, it's absolutely blowing a gale outside today, which is why I can't go out and shoot. But yeah, overall, what's my impressions of the two films? Well, Velvia 50 had beautiful colours, obviously, it's well known for that. But the Provia was surprisingly close, particularly in the greens. And it also some of the oranges and yellows were very, very comparable. 
I think the Velvia just edges it when it comes to obviously the saturation and the separation of, of the greens. It, it's just better at differentiating those colours. Uh, so overall I think I would err towards Provia because of its ability to work well with a minus one and a plus one exposure whereas with Velvia I'm going to have to overexpose it just like the 100 speed. I think it needs a bit more exposure just to uh, lift those shadows but that means you've really got to watch your highlights. With the Provia I can probably get away with uh, box speed. I could probably even actually push it slightly which is something I may do in the future. So yes, I hope you did enjoy that that, uh, that brief test. Uh, I want to do more in the future using different films. I'm definitely going to do it with uh, colour negative films because I do like using those for landscape work. And uh, yeah, all in all, I've, I really enjoyed it. Hope you have too and I'll see you on the next trip. Thanks for watching as ever.